So, another video request. And once more, it requires me to play from the beginning with no cheat codes. Fine. Let me start by mentioning that this guide will refer to event ranks. If you guys are not familiar with them, uh, or how they work, go to this site. Also, I wish to say that in order to prepare for this, you should watch this entire video right now. I don't want people to whine that they did not know about something and know this too late. Doing this entire thing sort of requires a lot of planning, and what most certainly needs to be said, this guide requires you to have some knowledge of the game, or at least be willing to do some extra research yourself. I won't be explaining every little detail, okay? In Romancing Saga, there's a monster called the Jewel Beast. It was present in the original SNES version, but in the remake, Things got complicated. At event rank 14, the Jewel Beast wakes up. At event rank 15, it leaves its lair, and at 16, it starts to cause rampage, destroying the three cities of Frontier one by one for each event rank to follow. Of course, you can try and beat the beast after it already destroyed the cities, but that battle is quite hard. There's actually a way to make this battle easier and save Frontier, which is what we'll tackle in this video. Delaying the awakening of the beast requires the completion of a few quests, and sadly, this includes the one that has the shortest ER limit. Unsettling Settlements It's blocked off at event rank 3, so you better get to it quickly, which can be tricky with some characters. E ER increases when you get into random fights. Gray and Sif start in quests where a lot of fights await them. Kind of tricky to get through those that fast. I guess Albert could be hard too, but his starting ER is lower, so it's more manageable. But of course, the easiest is Barbara, since it's basically her second quest, right after getting the Amethyst. And this is admittedly while I'll be doing the whole thing with her. What we need to do in these quests is beating a few boss enemy encounters. In this first quest, it's just two. First one being this duo of slimes, bring magic or piercing weapons along. And then there's the sea serpent, of course. Next is the Fiends of Saoki quest which can be started at event rank 4 in Saoki. In this dungeon, you'll have to confront 2 war beasts, 5 greater zombies, and 3 butterflies. Th those butterflies are the boss battle that ends the quest. The third quest comes at event rank 10, and here things get uh, tight time-wise. Even with the vampires then unlocked, you still have to obtain the chalice, it will be important later on. Enter the vampire's den, and this time there's five groups of enemies to defeat. Three vampire minions, two vampire minions, three vampire minions again, a werewolf, and the vampire. The vampire himself can be a bit tough. It's useful to have someone with moonbeam around to make the charm status go away. Of course, in this fight you are meant to use the chalice, since it deals great damage to all undead creatures. If you have big problems here, don't hesitate to use its Holy Sparkle ability. With these 10 fights completed, you can now extend how long the beast will sleep. We need to unlock the lair of the beast now. There's two ways to do it, the Aquatic Ecology quest or the Assassin Skilled quest. The latter is much easier, so I'll focus on that one for now. At event rank 12, go to self Estimir Pop, talk to the bartender, and uh, follow along. It's possible that another quest will trigger, but in that case, just come back here later. Once all the cutscenes are done, you should get the appropriate cutscene to start the Assassin's Guild quest. 
Quite frankly, it'll do you good to finish this one quickly with very few battles because things will get tough time-wise soon. You complete the quest normally, and if you did everything correctly and it's not even rank 14, the minion will unlock Jewel Beast's lair for you. If he didn't, then it means the Jewel Beast woke up already, so never mind, you lose. The lair has four pillars. Talking to one starts a very tough battle. Should you win, you'll delay the awakening of the beast by one event rank. Right now, the beast will wake up at event rank 14, so if you're inside the lair and it's event rank 13, you better make haste. And here's where things get ugly. You have to fight a Lamia and four zombie dragons. People online named various strategies on how to handle this fight. And I've tried them out and honestly, there's only one that I can really call efficient. You need a Rosalian Mage with the Overdrive spell. That character should carry the Chalice. And, uh, well, have someone else carry a Talent Blaster. An item which can be bought in Crystal City. The Rosalian Mage has to defend and someone else has to use that Talent Blaster on him. This will max out the Rosalian Mage's BP and he or she will be able to cast Overdrive, during which the Chalice's Holy Sparkle should be used around 3 or 4 times. Since it's all too likely that the enemies will either kill or stun your characters before this can work, it might be a pretty good idea to have some other characters use area stun attacks like Maiming Wally, use positions, trick mode, classes like Pirate or Loza Rosalian Lancer, and uh, agility increasing items uh, so that you'll be able to use these stun attacks just in time. But that's just additional ideas for survival. The Rosalian Mage is the main point here. This can get really tricky, so don't be surprised if you'll be forced to keep soft reseting over and over again. With that, the monsters will be gone, you win, and the awakening of the Jewel Beast has been delayed. But your chalice does run out of charges. I mean, it was already not full after the vampire battle, right? What should you do? Refill it, of course. Complete the missing Taralian's quest, and after obtaining the topaz, leave, and then come back. Now the altar, the altar can recharge your chalice. Hopefully you can do this and exit the dungeon without fighting too much, or else uh, your ER will be too high. Anyways, with all the pillars clear, you're in a state where the beast will wake up at event rank 18. So, ER 17 would be your last chance to fight it safely. But there's one more delay possibility. It's kind of tricky to consider preparing a little for it before that. It's a tough battle against four petrified beasts and two cockatrice. The biggest problem is them using that howl attack, which makes you skip turns frequently. I used a lot of area attacks here and I had my Rosalind Mage equipped Mind Blast, plus Wave of Life and Starby. This made the spell much cheaper and also gave it a paralysis that is element effect. Basically, even that did not really help much, but I won. Some people would at this point do the Aquatic Ecology quest, as it does unlock this Jewel Beast quest into the quest notes, which to me is uh, pretty pointless. But if you feel like it, do it. With all these preparations done, at event rank 18, it's time to fight the Jewel Beast. It has 30,000 HP and it won't do anything until it loses about a third of its HP. It's still immune to spells, but it doesn't seem to ever use jewel blasters, so this fight is much easier.
the end of the fight, you get the Bejeweled Ring, which I always thought was some legendary item, but apparently it's a ring that Nightheart wears by default. There's no real end quest jewel reward either. That's it. Well, I guess we save Frontier. All the citizens of those small new settlements are alive, thanks to us. And in the end, isn't that what really matters? The answer is no. <sighs> I'm so thirsty. <sighs> it's so bright out. It makes me tired. I wish night would get here. Welcome. Mm. Have you come to enter my service? What are you talking about? I'm here to dance on your grave! I can't believe I was a vampire! 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 I was a vampire! It was wicked fun! <laughs>